I need to know the decision here. I, we need the writer. You see, I, I am now a little bit um, confused how to fix this. So it was only a matter of time before IELTS starts giving us a topic on water. Yes, water. Exactly, as simple as that. But there are many countries and that are sadly suffering from drought or uh, lack of rain uh, and any basically any downpour. So many IELTS candidates are from these countries. And it's only natural that IELTS has one topic related to water, at least one topic. More topics will come because IELTS focuses on the current conversations and water is one of them and it's going to be one of them for quite some time. So let's begin analyzing and improving a task one report this time. Welcome to IELTS Juice. Here's the rubric. The charts below show the percentage of water used for different purposes in six areas of the world. So there are six areas of the world. We don't know which ones, but we're going to learn exactly what or where they are. So percentage, yes, we have a total of 100% divided into three, one, two, three, yeah, there are three categories, industrial use, agricultural use, and domestic use. All right, and uh, yeah, Africa, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, okay, th these are not countries, Europe, South America, North America, these are continents. Uh, not not all of them, actually. Again, this is Central Asia. It's not a continent. It's part of a, a larger continent. Yes, so we have we have all the information here, different percentages. What caught my eye was the overwhelming amount of water we use in agriculture. Look at this. 84%, 88%, 81%, 71%. Uh, the only areas where this number is not the dominant one are North America and Europe, 39 and 32% respectively. And which one was the dominant in these two areas, 48% and 53% is industrial use. Okay, do we know which years they are? The charts below show the percentage of water used in different areas in areas of the world. I do not see any year. So I'm gonna assume this is fact. So which grammar tense I'm going to use? Correct. Present simple tense. All right. Uh, I am going to need both the visual and the candidate's response side by side. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. So the pie charts, very good. We have pie charts. We have six pie charts. We identified the type of chart here. Offer a detailed comparison, it's a good word, of and a good collocation of water consumption in three sectors industrial agricultural and, and domestic i love the accurate use of parentheses here i needed one more comma here before and because it's a listening comma in six areas in the world and the areas are north america south america europe africa central asia and southeast asia this is correct. See, this is a listing comma. The last one ends in comma with and and. Overall, the percentage of water used for industrial purposes is, I love it. We know we need to use present simple tense because there is no time frame given to us. 
as dominance in North America and Europe, while for the remaining areas in the question, agriculture is the main purpose for water consumption. That's a very good opening. I have a clear framework in my head. We have North America and Europe with different policies. They use water for their industries, whereas water is mainly used in other countries for agriculture. To begin with, North America and Europe have, present simple, similar, have a similar pattern regarding the industrial use of water, com which comprises of or comprising of a considerable, I mean, both methods work, which comprises of, or you can just change the whole thing and say comprising of a considerable amount of water consumption at 48% and 53% respectively. So, yes, similar pattern, industrial 48%, 53%, 48% is related to North America, Europe, 53% respectively. Correct. Approximately one third, uh, there's a hyphen here, one third of water used is for agriculture. 39% 30, correct. Water used is for agriculture for these developed areas. You can say that. Domestic water consumption in North America is only 13%. Similar to Europe by a meager increase to 15%. Okay, we don't have a trend, so it's not an increase, uh, it's just a larger number. It's, uh, increase has this in, intrinsic meaning to it, that it was, it was a number, now it is a new number and it is larger. These two happen at the same time frame in two different regions. Maybe increase is not the best word, but I don't mean it's incorrect. I'm just saying this is a word that a candidate who wishes to get nine or eight, yeah, does not use. So let's move on to, oh, oh, this is the last paragraph and that's it. Oh my God. And we only covered North America and Europe. And you can follow the logic here. The logic is, North America and Europe are in one basket. South America, the two areas in Asia, and Africa are in, a, are, all of them are in another basket. So yeah, this should be a large body paragraph, and I don't see any conclusions. Again, it's not necessary for a high score, but, well, you don't get the perfect score. Anyway, turning to the remaining areas, yeah, the percentage of water used varies because it's only, well, otherwise you, you might have changed this to the percentages of water used uh, vary. Let's see what happens because the subject here is singular, but the verb is not, it, it does not agree with it. With agricultural use, Okay, okay. Dominating among others in Central Asia. Um, mm, dominating, maybe not a good word here. It's not used correctly. The grammar somehow doesn't fit because this is this is the verb. It can be used as a verb or it can be used as a as an element, as a dependent part of the previous sentence, I need to know the decision here. I, we need the writer. You see, I, I am now a little bit um, confused how to fix this. Because you could say 
the percentage of the the percentages of water used vary with agricultural use, which by far dominate. So we I need to say which dominate or which by far dominate other categories or others. But I, in that case, I don't need among. Or you could just use an adjective here and change the structure by saying which was the dominant percentage among others in Central Asia. So now I guess we are going to report the data. In Central Asia, by 88%, followed by Africa, oh, 84%. 81%. Oh, what happened? Oh, followed by Africa, 84%. Southeast Asia, 81%. Yeah. And South America, 71%. Good, respectively. Correct. However, uh oh, the domestic use. Oh, yeah, good. Good. So we talked about the dominant one, and now we're going to talk about the least. Uh, kind of use for water, the one that occupies the least amount of use, which is the domestic use of water accounts for the highest percentage in South America. Really? Wait a second. But uh, domestic use is uh, this one, 19%. Accounts for the highest percentage in South America by 19%? Oh, I understood. Among all the others, yes, 19 is the largest. In, in, if you look at the domestic use, 19% is by far, it's not by far, but it's the largest one. You see 19% and then it's 15, 13, 9, and 2 sevens. Yes, yes. But it's not the highest percentage of all. I understood now. In South America, by 19, Africa by 9% has the second place. And only 7% of the total makes up the domestic use for both Central Asia and Southeast Asia. Okay. Southeast Asia accounts for 12% water consumption by only 2% more than that of South America. Uh, what does it mean? Southeast Asia, it's this one, accounts for two per accounts for twelve percent water consumption by only two percent more than that of South America. This is South America, two percent more. Yes, that's correct. Industrial use of water comprises of the least amount of percentage in Central Asia. Central Asia is the least. Which one? Industrial use is this light blue one, 5%, and it's the smallest number in this category, let alone it is the least number actually everywhere. In Central Asia, by 5% has a negligible increase compared to, compared to Africa by only 7%. Okay. All right, good. Um, it, just towards the end, it's it was rather difficult to maintain focus and understand the logic. Uh, that's the reason why I keep saying that try to m write manageable paragraphs. When a paragraph becomes so large, it becomes very difficult to manage it throughout. Now, this is task one. Paragraphing is not as effective. Imagine this were a task two response. In that case, I would have definitely been uh, confused and uh, you would lose scores in uh, paragraphing. Maybe it, it could go down to six even in coherence and cohesion. So uh, I'll get chunks of paragraphs that are manageable to, um, to you. So don't worry about uh, in, like 
putting all the data into one paragraph, you can always break it down. In this case, for instance, I would have uh, focused on the, the agricultural use in the other four areas uh, because it's, it's difficult actually to manage all of them. And I could devote another paragraph about the other items, which are fairly negligible. I mean, like this is totally 12%. This is totally 16%. This is not even, this doesn't even exceed 20%. So uh, this is, I mean, for all the other elements, industrial use and domestic use, we could devote another paragraph and basically wrap up everything over there and then focus on our conclusion. Okay, now we're going to look at the band descriptors. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the report, by the way, was 247 words, which is quite acceptable. It should have been 150 plus. It is more than 150. And we basically covered all the details. So let's look at the band descriptors. Good. Yes, we covered the requirements of the task. And uh, we, yeah, we illustrated everything appropriately, not one perfectly, but yeah, that, that was, uh, the, the information was selected and reported quite well. Yes, it could be more fully extended um, by a better arrangement. The organization, I understand the logic, general logic, but inside, especially towards this, the, the last paragraph, the progression and the control uh, in maintaining the, co the cohesion in, within the sentences is a, a little bit lost. As there was a connector, however, remember, I said now we are going to talk about the opposite side. I was under the influence that we are going to talk about the smallest number, but we realized that no, it's not the smallest number. So, however, wasn't a good discourse marker there. I had issues with uh, referencing again because of a grammar, I will tell you here, and uh, paragraphing, sure. Vocabulary was sufficient. We had some errors. Uh, but they did not impede communication. Yeah, I mean, there, it's, it's, it, uh, the range was very good, but for instance, increase is not, the, is not the natural word to say. That's why this is six. I understand, but it's not the perfect word to use in this circumstance. And as for grammar, uh, I saw relative clauses, I really liked. I saw compound sentences again. I saw larger sentences and with relatively okay control. Uh, this is the part that we had contr control issues, especially towards the end uh, with uh, grammar. Not so much with punctuation. Um, we also had uh, two instances with reduced relative clause which I had to actually improvise. I had to come up with a sentence. When that happens, and when I say I need the writer here, that means I'm, I'm confused. And I need, I need to ask what the writer actually wanted to say he, in, in a particular sentence. And that is confusing. That's why grammatical range and accuracy remains at six. So in total, six is a healthy score for this particular report. If you wish to see an improved version of this report, the link is in the description below. Click on it. It will lead you to a page on the IELTS Choose website where you will have access to the original work and some more information about the assessment. Plus, down below, you will find the improved version with the perfect IELTS structure. And while you're at it, you might as well click on the subscribe button up here down below. And I hope I'll be assessing your report or maybe essay 
next time. Take care.